the team news. Plymouth's number three, John Uzel, was declared fit this morning after a groin strain. So it's the side which won at West Bromwich Albion in the fifth round and which beat Derby in the sixth. But the main news concerns Watford because Kenny Jackett was ruled out today with a thigh strain. So Captain Rostron, himself doubtful until yesterday, switches to number 10. And 20-year-old Neil Price, who was on loan to Plymouth, of all people, for a month recently, plays his first FA Cup tie at left-back. So there are seven players in the Watford team, aged 21 or under, and no player on either side has ever played in an FA Cup semi-final before. What a remarkable moment for 37-year-old John Hoare, the Plymouth manager, who only left Biddyford in the Western League six months ago to take over at Home Park, where he was a player with Plymouth for 14 years. Graham Taylor, who took over at Watford in 1977, and they were in the fourth division. Nice moment there between the two managers. He's just agreed a new six-year contract to stay at Vicarage Road. He's built more than just a team, he's built a club, and now the FA Cup final which he never made as a player beckons him and Watford and the referee this afternoon taking charge of his first FA Cup semi-final is Joe Worrell of Warrington and Mo Johnston the Watford discovery of the season 21 years old yesterday with George Riley he gets the semi-final started Watford are playing from right to left that was Bardsley Number six is Lee Cooper, the Plymouth captain. Busy midfield player. Uzel is the left back. Tynan now. Steve Terry. The pitch looks in good condition. Had it watered. There's plenty of grass on it. And Villa Park always a stately home for semi-finals. It was nicely laid off there by Tynan to Rogers. Andy Rogers takes on Bardsley. They've got players in the middle. David Phillips arriving. And Plymouth launched the first threat. They're not very tall. The men who uh, will be looking for the header, but Uzel will go up onto the goal line. It's been taken quickly and crossed. And Staniforth nearly got in. Bardsley did. Gordon Nisbet. Lindsay Smith had a fling at it, didn't get hold of it. And it was Price who wanted to get into the game early. Says he likes the big occasion though, and he's played in the UFA Cup, Neil Price. Hodges, Nisbet, nicely round. And the big question on this side of the field is can John Barnes win the match for Watford on the left flank? Hodges. Lisbeth to Lindsay Smith. Hodges again, took it down nicely. That's Staniford. It's back inside again, Rostron cleared. And a good, purposeful start here by the third division team. Tynan. Staniforth. Lee Cooper. Rogers had moved into the centre then. Hodges. And Rogers is there again. Trying to turn Bardsley. And Tynan's on the near post. Can he tuck it back? He did to Nisbet in the end, and the drive, I think it caught Steve Terry as it went through, it's a corner. Nisbet, the player who had the shot. Good effort. Now Rogers, the outside left, who scored direct from a corner at Derby, remember, is going to take this one. Away by Big George Riley, Nisbet again. Another deflection off the Watford player, Lindsay Smith! The first half chance. They haven't really cleared it, 
and the deflection carried the ball into the path of Lindsay Smith who as we saw at Derby is dangerous in that uh, area of the field he hit the post and bar that night well then he skied the ball over in this semi-final little John Hall wondering whether his team would freeze well the early signs are they haven't Smith with Riley Hodges Simmons Nisbet forward, back by Price, all a bit untidy at the moment, but here's Barnes, Riley's coming towards the near post, oh he got a flick and it's there! George Riley came in and Watford are in front after 13 minutes. John Barnes, the man they thought might win the match, got away on the left. Riley stayed over on the far side. He timed his run perfectly to meet the cross. And Watford are in the lead. So, the third division underdogs, having started so well, find themselves a goal down. But here's Rogers. was awkward for Steve Sherwood, it's a corner. Now, a test of the Plymouth character. Can they settle them down? Uzel has gone up to the corner, Cooper's there as well. And the flick on was by Uzel and Tommy Tynan's in there! As it, oh, and the shot by Hodges! Watford living dangerously how vulnerable a team is when they've just scored and from that scramble Plymouth on another day might have snatched an equaliser flags up on the far side referee has let play go this is Les Taylor trying to get round Lee Cooper and it's still Taylor, he missed kicked it, Riley didn't, saved by Crutchington. Good effort on the turn by George Riley. But Jeff Crutchington, who actually began his league career with Aston Villa, back on familiar ground today, made a fine stop, and he's kept Plymouth in the game. Lee Sinnott youngest player on the pitch only 18 Callahan. three waiting in the centre for Watford it's a good cross Johnston well when you talk about Watford you talk about wing play and they're real wingers not just midfield players or converted fullbacks they really do attack the line and get the crosses in orthodox fashion and it makes for opportunity and excitement in the area Callahan the provider Johnston just too high Staniforth turning and finds Hodges good position here took it early and just wide what we were caught square and sleeping attack, Rogers on the ball, Tynan, good effort on the turn, by a player who began his professional career with Liverpool, but never got into the first team, Tommy Tynan, 
halfway through the first half and it's Mo Johnston for Watford and the cross turned away by Nisbet Johnston again headed back across and Nisbet's header out Rostrum and now Barnes and Price has come forward turned away by Crutchington and put in on the far side but the flag up Nigel Callahan's effort wiped out for an offside the red flag there of linesman Roger Dilks who spotted the player in the offside position and it doesn't count this is Sinnott oh Barnes away by Harrison header by Sinnott now Price Phillips Rogers. Cooper's made a run forward here, number six. He's in a good position, but Les Taylor did the right thing. Who says there's no Watford midfield? He had to go back and defend against Lee Cooper. It's a corner to Plymouth. He played quickly. And Hodges! It was played short to Staniford. A nice chip in. And Kevin Hodges' flying header not far away. Good stuff from the third division team. And it draws a mighty response from the West Country fans. It just seems as though Watford have got the greater momentum when they play the more direct football, which is their trademark. But Plymouth have had some good moments and their build-up has been measured. Riley's in there. So is Mo Johnston with the overhead, and John Barnes. down that right hand side as well this is Bardsley he lost out to Rogers and now it's Tynan Plymouth looking to come square with uh, Lee Cooper and he's got Hodges outside him Staniford's coming to the near post but the ball just ran away from Hodges but the man who made the break from midfield was the captain Lee Cooper who's already had three or four surging runs from that position and it's forcing Watford's Les Taylor to go back and mark him. Barnes. Riley. And Barnes is off again. Pursued this time by Harrison. Watford have got three coming in from the far side. It's still Barnes. And it was going to be driven low for Taylor until Nisbet got in the way. corner to be taken by Callahan. Hitter out was by Uzel. Callahan again. And off Nisbet this time as Perth defend in depth. Staniforth. And it's Andy Rogers trying to turn away from Callahan in the last 10 minutes of the first half here. Nisbet for Plymouth. Surging forward. Fine run by Gordon Nisbet. Was he fouled by Lee Sinnott? Play on, Rogers. And Staniforth. That could have gone anywhere, the clearance by uh, Bardsley. Probing run by Gordon Nisbet from right back. Rogers and still Rogers and Lindsay Smith bumping and boring by Riley there Lindsay Smith felt he might have had a penalty 
Joe Worrell had a look and said no. And there's no sustained protest. They know each other so well. Old adversaries, but also former teammates at Cambridge United. Rogers. Come of course a corner again. There goes Yuzel. Cooper will take it. That's up with the flick at Ross and Staniforth coming in. Almost made contact. Staniforth, the man lurking beyond the far post, coming in on the flick. Johnston. Here's Rostron and now Riley. And Barnes will try and make something of it for Watford. Put it out by Lindsay Smith. It's a corner to Watford right at the end of the first half. Here's Les Taylor. So at the halfway stage in the semi-final, it's the first division team who hold the cards with a one-goal lead. Graham Taylor's side, who scored in their first dangerous attack, Plymouth Argyle nil, Watford won. The unpredictable nature of the FA Cup, illustrated by what happened to these two clubs back in the third round when Watford were 2-0 down at Luton, I recall and Plymouth saved themselves with a last-minute penalty against Newport County. Often acts of brinkmanship in the early rounds lead to days of glory like this. Later on, glory certainly for one team anyway in a semi-final, and often obscurity for the others. Don't often remember semi-final losers. Bardsley putting it back. And Plymouth for the moment losing this one by one goal to nil. And there's Riley taking a challenge from Lindsay Smith. Les Taylor a quick free kick and it's released Mo Johnston. And here's Callahan. The block was by Harrison. Stanley Forth trying to shake off Sinnott. Here's Nisbet. Terry. Just stumbling a bit there, Steve Terry, but recovering. Big test for him in a way with Steve Sims, the first choice centre half, on the injured list for a few weeks now. That was Smith. This is Terry again. A long ball pursued by Barnes. So often that kind of early ball forward forces for Watford, if not a goal scoring opportunity, at least a throw in or a corner. And they know how to use those. Price. They force a corner this time too. Anxious time for Plymouth, five minutes into the second half. They can't afford to concede a second goal at this stage. And Barnes flick on. Oh, that was bad timing by Lee Sinnott, his uh, jump sending him into the back of Staniforth. So it's Harrison with the kick for Plymouth. There's Tynan. Smith is forward. Rogers. Into Tynan. A chance here. 
and it was a drive by Staniforth which he didn't get fully behind I don't think it needed really hammering that and uh, Sherwood saw plenty of it Phillips forward to Rogers. Bardsley was quick the flag was up Uzel on Barnes Max Lindsay Smith covering still on the transfer list actually Lindsay Smith Tynan forward by Rogers Danny Forth marked by Sinnott and he's foxed him and there are three in the middle here for Plymouth and Hodges arriving taken out by Price good defending by the 20 year old in his first FA Cup tie but Plymouth are moving well again Cooper trying to get the flick on it Here's Phillips. John Hall knowing that a bit more momentum now, perhaps if they could just increase it by gear, the third division team could still have a say here. Rostrum tries to get Watford moving, a good break by him. So much enthusiasm about the way Watford play epitomised by the burst then from the captain from his own penalty area here's Tynan and now it's Uzel Forth to Cooper. Oh, it's a bad pass, but John Barnes stumbled a bit and Nisbet got it forward to Tynan. He does like to take his shots quickly on the turn, Tommy Tynan. You can see why last season with Newport he was the highest scorer in the country. Riley. Barnes. And still Barnes. And Riley just needed a touch out to Johnston. It got one then from Rostron. And Johnston's cross. And Riley goes in. And that's so, so close. And <laughs> how it stayed out, only the people tangled up there will really know. The cross came from Mo Johnston. Riley got tangled up with Uzel and the ball trickled wide of the post. in it Cooper finds Phillips for Plymouth oh Steve Terry saw that went through two tackles Les Taylor actually Terry got hurt in that last challenge this is Bardsley that's meant for Riley Harrison is covering for Plymouth And with 15 minutes to go, indeed 15 minutes away from Wembley as far as Watford are concerned, they have an injury to Steve Terry, who emerged from defence there to go through two strong tackles and then got hurt as he got through a third. I think it was Lee Cooper, the last player that uh, Steve Terry actually collided with. But Richard uh, Jobson, the substitute, is warming up in case. Graham Taylor and John Ward, one of his coaches there next to him, Knowing now, as the supporters behind them know, how close they are to Watford's first FA Cup final. Steve Terry is back in the action. Callahan. 
and again Johnston Harrison that's one for Tommy Tynan to chase now can they get anybody forward in support Staniford's trying hard and they've got two coming now from midfield one of them being Hodges Cooper is square number six and this bit Rogers taking on Price corner to Plymouth quickly taken and Rogers and Cooper working it and the floated cross headed back in by Staniforth and a chance for Lindsay Smith maybe Steve Terry is going to hobble off with about 11 minutes left and he'll be replaced by Richard Jobson whose only other appearance in the FA Cup competition was for Burton Albion now how are Watford going to reorganise will George Riley I wonder go back and play centre half I'll tell you at uh, Northampton and Cambridge that George Riley can play at centre half as well as at centre forward and it does appear that in the last 10 minutes of this FA Cup semi-final the man whose goal may take Watford to Wembley has had to totally change his role They've moved Barnes into centre forward and got Jobson on the left. Here's Johnston. And that was Barnes who's moved now into Riley's position. There's Tynan. Cooper for Plymouth. And Rogers making a spirited run on the left, blocked by Riley. Rogers again. But he switched from left to right, Rogers, these last few minutes. Here's Staniforth. It's Rogers again. Little ball in. Riley's header out. Staniforth with a chance. Oh, good tackle by Riley. The emergency centre half. Nisbet. And Plymouth are having a good little spell here. Nisbet's cross. And Sherwood comes and misses it completely or rather fumbles it and Bardsley clears Harrison back in for Plymouth header this time was by Les Taylor now Uzel and Watford need to just get the ball down and control things a bit Jobson takes on Nisbet Jobson with a fresh pair of legs remember Steve Sherwood had an anxious moment then. So too did Graham Taylor. Forward by Harrison as Plymouth prepare for a defiant last gesture. Les Taylor. Rostrum. And it's opening up here for Watford. They've got five against four. Callahan. Taylor Barnsley missed his tackle but not the second time Emma don't quite seem to know what to do with the throw it's Uzel Tynan is still willing Riley still dominating in the air Barnsley forward Smith and Riley again he's performing heroics back there Barnes a good turn, made himself some space and found Callahan. Three minutes to go, Callahan skips past Giselle, three coming in from the far side for Watford and he was taken on the edge of the area, Nigel Callahan, as he threatened to go by Lindsay Smith as well. 
So, time for a few words between Billy Hales and Graham Taylor there. John Hoare, obviously feeling the sands of time are running out for him now. His team are defending, they're a goal behind. They've given away a free kick. And Callahan drove it. Graham Taylor's team, less than two minutes away. Johnson to Barnes. Like a foul by Rostrum. Plymouth have the ball. Lee Cooper forward. Header by Price. Are we going to have a dramatic finish? If we are, it's got to come from Plymouth and come quickly because Lee Sinnott is in there to clear. Bit to Staniforth. And it's Staniforth. And he pulled it back for Hodges to shoot. And what on earth can you say about that? It was so close that that's sometimes the difference between getting to a cup final and getting knocked out. Staniforth, some trickery on the line. It was well conceived. And he pulled the ball back to little Kevin Hodges. And Watford was surviving there by the width of a goalpost in the last minute as well Barnes that's Uzel Lindsay Smith was fouled we're coming into time to be added on for stoppages this must surely be Plymouth Argyle's last chance they're throwing everybody forward It's aimed towards Lindsay Smith. And there's a chance here for Tyner. No, there isn't. What could have pulled them all back apart from Mo Johnston? And the header on could find Callahan. And he could make for the corner. Gordon Nisbet. Just look at them on the bench. And on that one too. Just a contrast in expressions. Here's Jobson for Watford. Looks it back, and it's Uzel's half clearance. Taylor! Jeff Crudgington knows that time is almost up. Sinnott. Callahan. They're going to want this to run through to Sherwood or Watford as John Hussell gets a spot of crack for Plymouth. And the long kick being chased by Barnes. And Watford are through to Wembley for the first time in their history. George Riley's goal wins the semi-final and takes this remarkable story of Graham Taylor's club a stage further. But on the same day as they celebrate, it's bad luck for Plymouth Argyle, whose third division challenge ended here with some dignity. The middle John Hoare, the manager, has every reason to feel pleased with his team. At no time were they overrun, at no time were they outclassed, and at no time did they lie down and die. But Watford, it seems, cannot be stopped. Promotion from the fourth division only six years ago, then from the third, then from the second, then runners-up in division one, then through to Europe, and now with a team almost rebuilt in the last 12 months, Graham Taylor and Elton John have steered this club through to the FA Cup final at Wembley, and Graham Taylor's proudest moment surely as he goes to salute the fans of this family club. Only one goal 